What's up guys, today I want to make a quick video going over an update to the fine-tune LLMs repo. The repo that I've made several videos on, including how to fine-tune Lama 1, GBTJ, and more. That update being what I referred to at the end of my last video. Uh, using this software, it is now possible to fine-tune Llama 70B on consumer-grade hardware. I was able to make a instruct model that I'll go over later in the video on my 23090s. This is made possible due to the recent innovations of QLORA, which came out in May, and Flash Attention 2, which I believe came out only a few weeks ago. I highly encourage you to look into those two pieces of software if you want to learn more about how this works now. But I'll give a quick rundown now. So LoRa basically adds an adapter that learns the weight updates and the base model, the GBT model, the Llama model, uh, does not learn at all, does not uh, change at all. And then what the Q LoRa and, and the Q in Q LoRa means quantized, where we lower the bit precision down to four bits. And since um, there are less bits being used, that further reduces the requirements uh, with regards to memory usage. And then what flash attention does is it, without going into uh, the details, basically modifies the intention mechanism uh, in such a way that the memory requirements as a sequence gets longer goes from being exponential to a more linear requirement, um, as well as flash attention speeds up training, uh, especially on longer sequences. So now that we know what the new capabilities are, uh, let's get into running the software. To do this, we of course will need to clone the repo. So I'll go ahead and copy the HTTPS uh, URL, and then I will open up a terminal and clone it. Uh, a important note is that while I am on macOS, I'll be connected to my Ubuntu server with the 23090s. So let's go ahead and git clone it now. Git clone, and then I'll paste the URL. And let's enter it. So now we have the software on our computer. Now we need to set up our environment. To do this, we have two options. As I've done in previous videos, I have a Docker image for this repo. This was more useful and needed when the primary way of fine tuning was usage of deep speed, as deep speed was very hard to use. If you wanna go that route, I recommend you watch the video in the card now. But otherwise, since it's simpler, um, I'm going to use just a simple conda environment and pip install from a requirements.txt file. After we install from the requirements.txt file, we're also gonna to need to install flash tension, and we're going to need to do that with a special flag at the end of it. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do conda create and dash n for the name. I'm gonna call it qlora2. I already have a qlora regular, but to walk through the process, we're gonna create a new environment and then I'm going to call it, um, use Python 3.9, I mean. I'm going to hit yes. And now we can activate the environment by doing conda activate qlora2. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it. And now we are inside of the conda environment. So now let's go ahead and pip install the requirements. Pip install requirements.txt. And this will take a bit, so I will come back when it's done. So the requirements in the requirements.txt file have been installed. Now we need to install flash attention too. And here we are on the flash attention GitHub page. And if we scroll down, we need to install it with a pip install, but with the additional flag of no build isolation. So let's go ahead and copy that. And back on the terminal, let's go ahead and paste that. And flash attention will be installed any second now. So that should be it with regards to the software requirements. Of course, you'll need things like CUDA installed, but 
for specific packages, we should be good to go. So of course, if we're going to fine tune, we need something to fine tune on. I'm going to use the instruct data set that I went over uh, in my last video. It is a data set built on the Databricks Dolly 15K. The software in this repo will create three files. It will create a train file of 80% of the data set, a validation file of 15% of the data set, and then we leave out 5% to test later on. If you want to use the same data set, I highly encourage you to check out my last video. So now let's go ahead and navigate to the fine tuning repo folder and take a look of what's inside the folder. So as we can see, there are some files that we recognize from previous videos, such as the old method, but then there are some new files. There's the TRL fine tune, which is the new core program that we'll be running. Uh, there's the llama patch, which makes usage of flask attention with the llama two models possible. Uh, and then we can see the instruct data set files that I mentioned. So since the TRL fine tune is the program we'll be using to fine tune, and since it has many different uh, arguments. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at those so we know what the options are. We have the model flat to select what model we want. Uh, since the Llama 2 models are behind a um, license agreement that you have to hit accept before uh, you can use it, you have to uh, provide your access token, which you can do with this flag or with the environment variable hf underscore token. We have split model, which allows you to um, split the base model onto multiple GPUs, which is very important to do it on consumer hardware. Block size, which is basically how long do you want your sequences to be. And then we have uh, some LoRa parameters, uh, the rank, alpha, and dropout. I'm using the same values as the QLoRa paper did. Uh, but if you want to um, mess around with those, you can go ahead and do so. Um, the most important one is probably rank. Uh, if you make this one bigger, the model, lower model will be bigger. And if you decrease it, it'll be smaller, but smaller models typically can learn less. So um, something to keep in mind. The learning rate, which we want typically to be uh, one or two to the negative four is what I've seen in the um, QLOR paper. The learning rate scheduler, how, how it decays, the warm up steps to the learning rate, the weight decay, which this is again is from the QLOR paper, where we're going to save the QLOR uh, checkpoints, how often we're going to log, eval, and save. Um, I keep these all the same. So typically, if I train, every uh, or log or test every um, 0.1 epic or 0.25 epics I'll figure out how many steps that is and then set these all the same how many epics we want to train the batch size um, the gradient accumulation steps which if you didn't know if you can't have a big batch size you can have a higher gradient, gradient accumulation steps to get an, an a uh, higher effective batch size, uh, gradient checkpointing, trust remote code in case you're using models that run some custom implementation, train file, validation file, the, the data set files, save limit, uh, having it be one will make it so you only save the best model, which means the one with the lowest loss. If you want to save multiple, you can increase that. Uh, use int 4, use int 8, meaning how do we want to quantize the model? Do we want 4 bits or 8 bits? I never used 8 bits, but I would think it would work. Uh, I'm either using no quantization or QLoRa, which is 4 bits. Uh, disable LoRa if you want to do full fine tuning instead. Disable flash attention if for whatever reason you did not want to use flash attention. For the Llama 2 models, you can use this flag. There's then the pad token ID, which we'll come back to. 
add EOS token and add BOS token. If your data set does not have the EOS and BOS tokens uh, applied to it, uh, use these flags and it'll add it for you. Uh, whenever I create a data set, I typically um, have those already in the data set, so I typically don't use these flags. And then we have the train data set ratio and valid da validation data set ratio. If you want to use a percentage of your data sets, uh, you can use uh, these flags to make the data sets smaller. So back to pad token ID. Um, by default for the Llama models, uh, when Meta was training the models, they were using negative one for the pad token ID, um, which works fine. However, um, Hugging Face does not support a pad token ID of negative one. And so what they do is they either use the um, EOS token or you need to add a new token or just use some other existing token for the pad token ID. You don't want to use the EOS token in most cases because the model won't know when to stop. Uh, the EOS token will become the pad token effectively. So that is not a good option. Adding a completely new token means that you have to retrain um, or train a uh, embedding layer or output layer with the lower model, increasing the size and complexity. What I found that works well, at least so far, I haven't had any giant data sets yet, is um, using a rare unused token. Uh, I found two that work really well. Um, I think it's 18610 is what I've been using. And basically what I do is I make sure that that token does not occur anywhere in the data set, which then means that that token for the fine tuning is safe to use as a pad token. And that makes it so that we don't need to retrain the embedding layer, uh, making the lower model smaller, uh, reducing complexity and uh, preventing that issue that I mentioned with having the model just continually generate because it no longer has an EOS token. So now that we've gone over what the flags do and we've gone over how to install all the needed packages, let's go ahead and run it. I'm gonna run it with a block size of 1024, which is um, a block size that makes sense for the data set. It's like three standard deviations um, above the mean. Uh, eval steps, save steps, and log steps of 368, which I pre-calculated is 0.5 epics. We have the training data set, we have the validation data set, we're using the 70B model, we're splitting the model over both my 3090s, a batch size of 1, a learning rate of 2 to the negative 4, uh, 1000 epics just to uh, make sure that we train it enough, uh, although you probably could lower this almost certainly. Green accumulation steps to 16 for an effective batch size of 16, 16 times 1. Very important here, the pad token ID of 18610 um, to solve that issue I talked about. And then we're using QLORA to make this possible, so we're doing the use int4 flag. So let's go ahead and run it. And I will come back once everything is loaded and running. So the model is now training, and we can see that it's taking about 63 seconds per step. Uh, let's just call that you know, a minute per step, which means that we'll get about an epic uh, every, um, every 12 hours or so. And so it's not the fastest in the world, but it's not, it is definitely still doable. Just give yourself a couple days and you can fine tune on a data set with tens of thousands of entries. Um, let's also go ahead and take a look at the memory usage. So uh, this one is using a bit more memory due to the fact that it also has the LoRa model on there. But for both of them, we still have um, not plenty of memory left, but we probably could even further increase the block size uh, I would not be surprised if we could get it up to 2048 uh, on this hardware. 
Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if on A100 we could go all the way out to 4096. Uh, and all of that is due to flash attention. So I've done several training runs with a very similar configuration, um, slight differences, but I know that typically the model trains in roughly one and a half epics to two epics, and I went ahead and trained a model for one and a half epics, uh, and here is the loss you can see here. But what I am so excited to share is that the model that I trained is on Hugging Face, and if you want to run this model yourself, you can uh, go to the link in the description, or here's the model name here, and run the model yourself. We can see what the prompts um, in the data set were. So it's an instruct model uh, with optional context. So if you want to give it context, you can uh, can with the input and then the context, or you can just um, ask questions or ask it to do things without any context as you can see here. So I've gone ahead and deployed that model and I just want to run two prompts against it and I'll go ahead and share those now. So they're in the instruct prompts and input. So this is um, looking at the text, give a summary. This is just um, the top section of the Wikipedia about Burning Man. It was one of the top articles today. So I selected it. And then the other one is who was the second president of the United States. So let's go ahead and run against both of those. So let's try it with the Burning Man one first. And we can see the summary being written now. So I didn't read it, but it, I mean, it seems very plausible that that is an accurate, well done summary. Now let's do it for the input two. Who's the second president of the United States? John Adams. So there we go, an instruct model that I fine tuned on the Dolly 15K data set, and uh, it works great. While instruct models are great and very useful, the really exciting application of these models is making an instruct or even a chat model on valuable data. Um, if you would like to make a custom model on your own data set in any domain that you have, feel free to contact me and we could potentially work together. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. If you like the video, please be sure to leave a like. If you like this kind of content in general, be sure to subscribe as there'll be more in the future. Consider joining the Discord for technical help and fun discussions. Thank you so much for watching and please stay brilliant.